Hello and welcome back to Ram and the Bush Ministries. My name is Robert Levingston and I'd like to thank you for joining us once again as we study God's Word as it's presented to us in the Bible. As Christians, should we pray for the world? In Matthew 24, Jesus gives a prophecy on how the world would be near the end times. It's not a, a beautiful picture. He says in Matthew 24, 22, Jesus says, except and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. In other words, Jesus is saying, if he doesn't return, that man will destroy himself. Now, the question is, should we as Christians pray for the world? If you listen to people pray online and some of the lay preachers, you hear them pray. Now, Jesus laid out a way for us to pray. But there are times when you hear them say, Lord, we're praying for this world. But is that what Jesus says? That we should pray for the world? Look at these next clips. And this is just a sample of what goes on daily. Lord, of course, no exception, with three incidents being reported this year alone. CBS 4 Stead Cowden spent the day speaking with experts and families directly impacted by the gun violence and joins us now with how to recognize the signs and what can be done to curb the chaos. I had my back turned and all of a sudden, ba 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 and that's when everybody started running. The chaos after a mass shooting at the Licking Restaurant in Miami Gardens. So far this year, just 25 days in, we've seen 40 mass shootings in the U.S., according to the Gun Violence Archive. It found three in South Florida, including nine shot at Miami Gardens New Year's Day, 10 shot at the Licking Restaurant a few days later, and one killed and three injured in Homestead on the 15th. It makes me frustrated that we, uh, as a society, we haven't done enough to stop these things. Tony Montalto's with that shooting at an outlet mall in Allen, Texas, just north of Plano. The Collin County Sheriff tells our sister station, WFAA, this is a deadly shooting and there are multiple victims, including children. The sheriff also reported that the shooter is dead at the scene. Now, according to reports, gunfire erupted at Allen Premium Outlets at around 3.30 this afternoon. A witness described what he saw. Outside the store, he was walking down the sidewalk towards, he was walking down the sidewalk towards Fatburger, and he was just shooting his gun everywhere for the most part. The ATF Dallas field office reported that its agents are also responding to this shooting. Stay connected to KHOU 11, our app for more information as this becomes available. National crisis that seems to have no end in this country. This morning at the Covenant School in Nashville, Tennessee, six people were killed when a shooter walked in and opened fire. Three of the victims were students, all just nine years old, and three were staff members. Officials say the shooter was armed with two AR-style rifles and a handgun. NBC's Kathy Park has more. The start of a school day shattered by gunshots at the Covenant School in Nashville. We are under a mass casualty alert. The school shooting, multiple victims down. Police rushed to the small poor student, entered the building through a side door, then fatally shot three nine-year-old students and three adults. Authorities say the suspect, 28-year-old Audrey Hale, who identifies as transgender, was killed by police. Now, as you see, tragedy happens more and more daily and more and more deaths is mounting up where 
multiple lives are taken in one event. And it's, as Jesus prophesied, it's going to continue to a crescendo. It's going to get so, so bad that if he does not return, we will destroy ourselves. And the question is, should we pray for the world? Um, let's look at what Jesus says in Matthew 24. We're going to continue. Let's go to 14. Jesus says, gives another, indica gives another indication as to when the end times or when he's going to return. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. In other words, once everyone hears about, hear the gospel of Christ, then it's time for him to return. With the internet, with televisions, with satellites, the word is getting around about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now those people, there are some that are saved and there are some that reject him. And Jesus also says that if you go down and stay in Matthew 24, if you look down at 37, he says, but as in the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the son of man be. In other words, we're at a time now worse than the days of Noah. Remember Noah, the world was so bad that the Lord destroyed it and he sa saved Noah and his family because they were not corrupt and they were righteous. To give you an example, the shooting in the Wild West, the OK Corral shootout. Do you know that three men lost their lives and two were wounded? Three. Now, three is not even considered in this country a mass shooting. It has to be five or more. And that's how terrible the times have gotten. Let's look at what Jesus did and what Jesus said about praying for the world. Or what example did Jesus give us? Let's go to John 17, 8. And the Bible says, and this is Jesus talking, for I have given unto them the words which thou gavest to me. He's talking to the Father. And they have received them and have known surely that I came out of thee. And they believed that thou didst send me. Continuing on nine. And I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them going down and 11 and and now I am no more in the world but these are in the world and I come to thee Holy Father keep through thine own name those whom has that whom thou has given me that they may be one as we are. So you could extrapolate a lot of things from what Jesus is praying to the Father. Number one, he is not praying to the world, for the world. He's praying for his people. And if you add that to modern day time, because we are a part of his body, we are his church. We are the bride of Christ. He's praying for us in this world. He's not praying for the world. So he set an example for us. Am I saying don't 
pray for the world? Yes, pretty much Jesus set the example. Well, who should we pray for? Well, what did we used to be? Let's go to Titus 3.3 3 and what Titus says or what is said in Titus. Verse two, to speak no e speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. In other words, we were sinners. And we did the same thing. We were of the world until Jesus called us and we answered the call and we gave our lives to him. We were born again. You say, Brother Livingston, we not be of the world, but we're in the world. Yes, but we're not, as Christians, we're not of the world. We can't do it. Let's look, go to Luke 16, 13. Turn your Bibles to Luke 16, 13. And the Bible says, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. In other words, you have to serve him. Disregard what the world has to offer. Live for the Lord. You have to separate yourself from the world and worldly things. Yes, we can live in the world, but you cannot be of the world. Let's go on down to Titus. We're still in Titus 3. Let's go to 9 and 11. How do you separate yourself from the world? This is what Titus says. Let's go to 9. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentious strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is a, an heretic after the first and the second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such a subvert and sinneth being condemned of himself. In other words, to give you an example, there is a group of people out there call themselves uh, uh, Hebrew Israelites. What scripture is saying, I, don't even argue about genealogies. If you're part of the body of Christ, it does not matter. But if they persist on this arguing about, well, you keep the law, you do this, you do that. Some of the law says the old law that was presented to the Jews was that you couldn't wear two types of clothing, material. In other words, if you had a cloth, cotton shirt on, you could wear wool uh, slacks. That doesn't apply to us. We are under a new covenant. We are the body of Christ. And the Lord gave us different instructions. So if one of the ways of separating yourself from the world and remember that Satan will use people that are not saved and they may claim to be saved as his tools. And, you, and this is a warning here in scripture saying, be aware that there, there are heretics that, go, that are gonna say, you're not gonna hear because you weren't, you're not a true a Hebrew or you don't follow the law. That is unprofitable and is vain. All that genealogy is vain. Let's keep going. This is what we shouldn't do or how we separate ourselves from the world. Let's go to John 5, 1. 
Jesus in the Bible says, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God, and everyone who loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. In other words, if we love Christ, we are begotten of him, not children of Satan. Stay in 1 John. Let's go down to, uh, turn your Bibles to John 3, 1 through 20. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth, knoweth us not because it knew him not. In other words, the world is going to hate you and they don't know you and really don't want to know you because you're not part of the world. Let's keep, let's go on down to eight. And he that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. In other words, sin was manifested with the devil and man was corrupted and failed after they were deceived. Adam and Eve were deceived by the devil, which meant sin was in, entered into the world and death because sin is death. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In other words, our sins are washed away. If we repent, we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. We separate ourselves from the world. Now, because we are human, we will slip. But because our, we are children of God and a member of the body of Christ, our sins are not no longer with us. Let's go to, to 10. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For anyone, oh, excuse me, cut, for 11, for this, is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteousness. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. In other words, don't be surprised because the Lord is telling us the, we're going to be hated by the world. The world doesn't know us. So should we pray for the world? No. We should pray for those that are saved. We should pray for the, our brothers and our sisters that are currently being persecuted, but also those that are to come to Christ and also they will be persecuted and we pray for them. Right now, we have an opportunity to spread the gospel, to bring, to bring as many people to Christ as possible. Those are the people, those are who you pray for, not the world. The world is the ab of the adversary. The world is ruled by the adversary, the devil. You're studying scripture. Jesus instructs us to spread the gospel. Matthew 5, 11, and 12. 
Scripture says, Jesus says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets who were before you. In other words, as we said before, life is but a vapor compared to eternity. Imagine just taking a puff of smoke and there it is and it's gone. That is how our life is compared to all eternity. Just a speck. You have a, an opportunity to decide where you spend eternity. With Christ, with eternal joy, or away from the Lord, in hell, in the lake of fire, in eternal torment, forever and ever. That's your decision. To answer the question, should we pray for the world as Christians? No. Once again, I'd like to thank you for studying with us. And if you would, let's close with a prayer. Blessed Father, Father of all creation, Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to study your word. We thank you, Lord, for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We pray, Lord, that this study and this message reach some ears that may have had questions about how to pray and who to pray for, and that it may stir someone to spread the gospel and spread the news of your king, the good news of your kingdom, and the sacrifice that was made upon Calvary so that we may have everlasting life. Lord, we love you. We give you all the honor and all the glory because you're worthy. And these prayers we ask in your son's precious name, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our Redeemer. Amen. We'd also like, again, if you enjoyed this study or appreciate it, please share it with someone. Also, give us a thumbs up, a like, because it helps with the algorithm on YouTube so we could get that message out even further. Please subscribe if you have not subscribed and hit the alert button. Until next time, may the Lord's blessings be with you.